Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becky with Becky Selman's Art Studio. How's everybody doing? Um, it's a pretty day here in Texas. Um, I wanted to come on and do a video because I needed a, uh, I needed a match to this tile that I made this morning. hope everybody can see that oh okay it's a towel that I created this morning and uh I'm gonna make a match to it right now I'm gonna show the ingredients that I use to mix my paints and all of that good stuff so here we go this is my medium that I mix all of my acrylics with. Um, it's mixed pour. It's made in the USA. Uh -oh. Can y'all see that right there? It's Krista8974 at gmail.com. This is where you get mixed pour from. You email Krista. Um, it's the best medium. For acrylic paints I've ever used and that's what I use okay so um, I did this one yesterday or day before yesterday yeah it was yesterday it's got a pearl red base with balloon smashes on it oh, lovely it turned out very very well so I'm gonna do the black one because it doesn't have a match and I think I'm going to pair those up, those four together, as like an on and off match. So, here we go. This is Global's Colors, Black, and Mixed Pour. You can get, mixed, uh, you can get Global Colors paints at Becky Selman's artstudio.com I'll have that link in the description um, along with Australian Floetrol and other paints that I'll be using in this in this color palette a color combo so I spin it out because this is a swipe uh, there's actually three swipes on this tile um, and so when I do my swipe, I like for my, my base color to be fairly level. So that way when it all spins out, the stretched, the, um, the Australian flow trawl and the color stretch and it's able to stretch beyond its limits and my cells get really, really, really big without breaking. So, I usually go one way and then I spin the other way just to make sure it's level. That's just a pet peeve of mine. You don't have to. And then I can pop bubbles all the way across. Okay, so I used a lot of colors on these tiles. So I'm going to go back through my colors that I used. Um, my first color that I used was Nepothal Crimson by Joe Sonia. I carry this in my shop. Um, mixed it with mix. Seven to one, it's nice and sorry, nice and thick. Holds its lines really, really well. So I just drizzled it on in the middle. Just kind of give it loopy loops. Just kind of did some drizzling. Then I came back and used Fire Opal 
my faux carts. I also carry this in my shop, BeckySellmansArtStudio.com, along with the other Treasure Gold series colors. I am getting uh, pink tourmaline in, although it is going to be in the, I carry the four ounce bottles, I believe, right now. And I'm getting in the smaller bottle of the pink tourmaline. Uh, now I'm going to add my... I did add some of the pearl white back into this. Uh, excuse me, not the pearl white. The pearl red by Amsterdam. And this is all I had. The pearl red. So it's white, but it has that red sheen when it dries. So I just kind of strained it on. Then I added this is folk art purple shift. It's a color shift by folk art. I also carry these in my shop, and you just, oh, I, I didn't mean to dribble that on the black. That'll give me a lesson to, to be more calculated in my movements. Oh. Sorry, guys. That was pure mistake. Okay, then I'm going to take... Reflux, ref, reflux, reflex rose. Um, it's an Amsterdam uh, fluorescent paint, and I'm going to drizzle that on, and I'm going to drizzle that kind of on the outside, too, around the edge, the outside edge. Um, you're not really going to see that a whole lot because it is kind of it is transparent. Then I came back in across the top with some more red because I lost the red at the bottom. Just a little bit. And I did kind of give me some outer edge lines with some red. I did kind of edge the line out with red. Okay. Now use this. This is just, I got this in a butter knife. It's just a serrated little knife I found in my kitchen one day and I thought I'm going to use that to swipe with and I found it back in my art studio while I was cleaning it to bring more stuff out here and I decided to swipe with it again and it's given me some pretty good results so I'm going to do it I've been using that so I'm gonna I'm going to kind of give it a layer. Okay. I gave it a layer across the top of that. And we'll turn it sideways because I'm going to go straight down the center. And that's my first swipe. I'm going to clean the tool back off because I'm going to use it again. Give me a minute. I, give me just a second, guys. I'm, i got to clean. I had to clean the tool off. So then, you have to watch how it's developing. Then I'm going to add more cell activator onto it but instead of going the short distance
and I'm gonna do a swap. I've got it again. I'm gonna swap all the way across. So we'll start here. And hopefully swap all the way across. So and I, I go across the knife all the way down just so I can make sure that I'm getting a good swap all the way down. And so now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I am giving it a good good coat. And I'm taking it and I'm swapping it across it. Okay. That's my third swap. Now I spin it out to stretch the sails out to make sure I get good lines through here. I don't worry about the wrecked part of the swap. I'm just closing up my bottle of, I'm just closing up my bottle of Australian Flow Troll, my mixed. Oh, I use one tablespoon of Australian Flow Troll to one teaspoon of Amsterdam Titanium White. Um, sometimes I'll mix a couple, uh, about six drops of Josonia varnish, but right now I'm rolling with just the unleaded cell activator. Okay, so now I'm going to spin this out and see if we can't get the cells to open up and get bigger and go over the edges. Because I do have problems with them going over the edges sometimes. And then I'll show you how to fix that if you have a problem, a problem spot. And y'all, I just let it spin. So if you get kind of dizzy watching this, you can, you know, turn away. But sometimes I get a little dizzy. Now see how this is opening up. And this is starting to open it up and get bigger. Spin it the other way. And it just helps grow them cells. Uh, the back in the opposite movement. Instead of growing them one way and making them kind of oblong. This helps them stretch into more of a circuit. It, it helps them grow into more of a circular pattern. So yeah, um, I've got this one corner that I'm having problems with, so I'm going to show y'all how to fix that. I'm going to bring y'all out just a little bit. Okay, so you have to sling it, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, you take your pile, you put your corner that you don't want to sling or that you want the paint to come across in the outer edge of your spinner. So when the paint moves, it'll sling off that way. So it's all going to get slung off that side. See? It is all moving to that side. It's going to go over that edge. And I'll show you. One more. Okay. And I'll bring you down and I'll show you. We'll bring it back to center. Do you see how that edge come off right there? Now it did bring my colors off to that side. That's okay. 
I'm going to do some balloon smashes. Now, on top of that, and I have to, I guess my dog popped my other little balloon I made. Okay, I had to, I had to blow up another balloon, I'm sorry. Oh, and I don't, I do not like balloons. Y'all, I'm just... I don't like a balloon because I know people like to pop them things around you. And whoa! Okay, so I've got a little balloon here. I'm going to use this part. Sorry, I'm going to use this side right here because I don't like this pointy side. I, I, I like this part. So I'm going to go down. Uh... I think I want to go down right here where there's like a really long sail. I'm going to drop it down and then pull it up. And you're going to have, and you're going to have some suction right there because it's going to create suction. But that's kind of what you want because when you, want, you lift up, you want that pressure to pull up you, because you want that suction you want that suction to pull up and pull those paints together like that and I wish I could move y'all down to another camera but I unfortunately only have one and I would show y'all at eye level on how the the paint pulls up but unfortunately I, I don't have another camera um, hopefully in the near future I'll be able to do a two angles to where y'all can see that and then i'm going to put one right up here in this eye to drop it down and slowly come up and then let it hold because you've got a still sticking and then let go when it drops because you don't want to let go too early or you've got a line and it's going to lay over you want it to fall back in place as like a little center dot. So, um, I'm thinking since I've got all the color on this side, I'm thinking about putting another balloon smash right there, kind of like off centered right there so i think that's what i'm going to do you look here come up like that and do like three in that corner just kind of offset it a little bit i mean i'm still in my color Slide. Uh, I'm still in my color swipe. Um, and I think that gives it, it brings a little of that black, it brings a little of that black back into it. So, let me bring y'all up for a close up. Let me bring y'all, let me bring the towel up for a close up. Hope y'all can see that. And when it dries, these some of these paints will be sparkly, and some of them will have a hue to them. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Um, and give me a thumbs up. And I think that'll do it. Um, if you have any questions. Uh, reach out. I'll help. All right, thanks. Enjoy the journey. Bye.